today we are going to start the lecture series on the basis of the veterinary dentistry basically these are a series of lectures in which we are going to cover different topics uh, in the uh, veterinary dentistry and in the end we are going to specifically focus on the equine dentistry and uh, that aging estimation of the horse through its dentition so let's begin our first lecture uh, that is on the dental anatomy. Uh, we know uh, the tooth has uh, different parts. The first part of our tooth is the crown. Uh, the crown is highlighted uh, in this first image and it is the outer visible part of the teeth. Um, the next part is uh, basically the root. Root, you can see highlighted portion in this uh, picture. And it is a part of the tooth that, that is embedded in the alveolar bone. Uh, and the portion uh, or the area where the crown and the root uh, join with each other forms the cemento enamel junction. Basically, this narrow portion is called as uh, the neck of our tooth because this is a portion where the crown and the root meet with the, each other. Uh, next important thing is the furcation angle. What is furcation angle? Basically, we know uh, the teeth in a mouth have roots that can be one, two or more than two roots. So, uh, between two or more roots, the point where the roots actually diverge uh, is called as furcation angle. Like, you can see this tooth uh, in which we know, uh, we can see that there are two roots. So, the angle between these two is called as bifurcation. But in the next tooth, there are three roots and the angle between these three roots is called as trifurcation. Uh, so, this is the furcation angle. Uh, next we have is the apex. What is apex of a tooth? Basically, it is the end part of the root. Uh, here you can see in this diagram, the, high, uh, the encircled portion is the apex of the root, this area or the, this area. So, uh, basically this area has a single foramen in humans or multiple canals in cats and dogs or herbivores or horses. Like you can see this is a canal going on or this is a canal in the cross section image. So, uh, what is the function of this canal? Basically, all the nerves, blood vessel, lymphatic. Sorry, I have a bit of the internet. Uh, so, uh, these things enter into the pulp through this uh, hole or through this foramen that, uh, that is formed in the apex of the root. And you can see here that, that uh, it is mentioned that in some herbivores like horses it eventually closes basically uh, we will understand the importance of this apex uh, more importantly in the upcoming slides uh, basically uh, in some animals uh, as far as this slide is concerned you should remember uh, only this thing that in some animals uh, the apex remains open throughout their life and in the others it closes so uh, based on this fact uh, th there is a species difference that allows teeth to grow throughout the life in some animals but it does not allow the teeth to grow in the other animals like we humans hamare daant sari zindagi badhte nahi rehte once they have achieved their maximum uh, uh, length after that there will be no more growth but in the other animals like uh, horses or rodents like rabbits, you see that their teeth grow, keep, kept on growing throughout the life. So, uh, we will see uh, um, more detail on this thing in the upcoming slides. So, uh, we will see more detail on this thing in the upcoming slides. Next we have is the alveolar bone. Uh, alveolar bone as highlighted in this image is a portion of the bone in which the root is uh, uh, fixed or the 
tooth from its root or the root portion of the tooth is embedded in the alveolar bone. Uh, next we have is lamina dura. What is lamina dura? As a, a clinician, you must know that uh, uh, whenever we have a case of uh, dentistry, uh, we go, go for the radiographs of the teeth. Um, when we have a radiograph or x-ray of a teeth, we see that uh, where this uh, red line you can see in this picture, uh, they on the x-ray we have a white line over here. Basically, we know this whole portion is alveolar bone, but the portion of the alveolar bone that uh, is parallel to the root appears as a white line on the radiograph that is called lamina dura. Basically, this is the densest po portion of the alveolar bone and it is called as cribiform plate. And on x-rays, is it appears as white line and is called as lamina dura. Next, we have is enamel. Enamel covers the crown. Um, basically, it is a non-living structure. You should remember this, that this is a non-living part of the uh, teeth and it is the hardest part made up of inorganic and organic materials in inorganic it is made up of hydroxyapatite crystals and uh, four percent is organic material and water next most important thing in enamel is you should remember that enamel is formed by ameloblast what are ameloblasts basically ameloblasts are uh, the uh, cells uh, of the teeth like when we talk about the bone what we say that we have um, uh, osteocytes or osteoblasts similarly when we talk about the tooth we have ameloblasts or odontoblasts and uh, uh, right now we are talking about ameloblasts ameloblasts are present in the enamel you should remember that so enamel is formed by the ameloblast next we have is uh, uh, one of the property of enamel and and you should remember this, uh, that uh, enamel is capable of only a very limited repair one damage, one tooth has erupted. That when one time the dent grows in the mouth of the animal, then if there is a damage, like we see the animal's face, yeah, many head and face injuries, like uh, in a car accident, hit and run cases, and their tooth basically uh, are broken down. So if the enamel is damaged, you should remember, oh, ho, this is a, a bad situation and the enamel is not going to repair completely. So this is a bad thing, but that's the property of enamel. Next, next is cementum. Cementum is uh, uh, the portion that covers the root. It's just like enamel. Enamel covers the crown. Cementum covers the root. It is capable of formation and destruction and repair and remodel continually throughout the life. And that is a very good thing that if any destruction or damage happens to cementum, it will quickly or it will remodel and repair itself. And it is uh, why it has uh, this property. Uh, okay, you can see uh, that we have uh, talked that enamel is unable to uh, or has limited uh, ability to repair, but cementum has uh, quite a property of uh, repair and remodeling. And why is that? Because of these last three lines. You can see that cementum is nourished from blood vessels. Although these blood vessels come from the periodontal ligament, but they nourish the cementum too. But as far as enamel is concerned, we have seen that it is non-living part. It is the hardest part and there is no blood supply or no nourishment. So that's why when it's broken down or injured, it won't be able to repair. But when we talk about cementum, because it is being nourished by vessels, it has the ability to repair. The last one is periodontal ligament, uh, okay. Uh, periodontal ligament is basically a taut collagen fiber bundles that are called Sharpay's fiber. You should remember this name. Okay, uh, the place of, uh, uh, or the location of the periodontal ligament is that it is found between cementum of teeth and alveolar bone, okay. Uh, we see this is alveolar bone and this is a cementum. Out, cementum is outermost part of the root and alveolar bone is uh, outside the root. So in between cementum and alveolar bone, you can find the periodontal ligament. And this ligament has uh, three categories of fibers. You should remember their names as far as MCQs are concerned, gingival, transeptal, and alveodontal. Uh, 
Uh, next one uh, we have is that periodontal ligament has blood vessels and nerves in it, which transmit heat, cold, pain, pressure, in addition to proprioception in some species. So basically, it is a sensitive area that will perceive, that will transmit all of the feelings, sensory feelings that it will feel that is either heat, cold, pain, pressure, whatsoever. Uh, next, we have term is periodontum. Uh, it is a basically generalized term that uh, include gum, tooth root, cementum, periodontal ligament, and alveolar bone. Basically, these five things, these five uh, come are uh, in a general called as periodontum or when we refer to periodontum or when we talk about periodontum basically we are referring to these five things all together and okay next we have is dentine dentine is the main supporting structure and it is the second hardest tissue in the body after enamel. It is 70% mineral and acellular. You should remember that dentine is acellular part of the tooth that it has. And it has uh, uh, high, uh, hydroxy appetite crystals. Rest of the 30% is organic. And dentine has uh, different types. Primary type of the dentine form. Okay, before eruption and uh, uh, the primary dentine will form uh, before the, the tooth has come out or erupted. The secondary dentine will form after eruption and it is formed from the... Sorry, I have a bit of internet issue in between. Uh, so let's start from here. Uh, dentine types, primary forms before eruption uh, that before the tooth has erupted the dentine will be primary secondary forms after eruption and it is formed from the odontoblast living within the pulp and you can see I have told you above that dentine is acellular so what about these odontoblasts so you should read it carefully that these odontoblasts basically live within pulp but they develop the secondary dentine uh, and this secondary and that whole process occurs after the eruption so do remember dentine is acellular next is tertiary or reparative dentine it forms as a result of trauma to odontoblast that can be thermal chemical or mechanical so basically whenever any damage can happen uh, because of that uh, tertiary dentine will form uh, our last uh, term here to know is pulp. Pulp is living tissue. You should remember this for MCQs. Uh, it is a living tissue that, uh, within the tooth that is located in pulp and root canals. Uh, it is well innervated and vascularized, mean it can, it is sensitive. It is sensitive to pain and perception and temperature. Uh, next, it, ha it has connective tissue, nerves, lymph, blood vessels, odontoblasts line the pulp cavity. So you can see uh, odontoblasts are present within the pulp. We have talked about ameloblast in the previous slide that was present in the enamel, and you should remember that. Uh, last point is what are the potential pulp dangers uh, number one is physical trauma if physical trauma happens to pulp it can cause bruising hemorrhage or pulpitis pulpitis is basically inflammation of the pulp accidental overheating from scaling what is scaling scaling is basically a normal process of uh, cleaning of uh, the teeth that can be done manually or by uh, different instruments uh, it can cause pulp necrosis <clears throat> and uh, then we have is tooth fracture tooth, if there is tooth fracture that has fractured uh, the pulp to uh, the pulp area too then it can cause pulpitis or pulp necrosis so i hope you have understood all these uh, terms and if you have liked this video follow for next uh, all those lectures that are in line to cover your uh, equine dentistry, uh, sorry, uh, veterinary dentistry basis. Thank you so much.